Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we have a, a nice lesson on separation techniques. Now as the last slide pointed out, separation techniques are only going to work for mixtures. Uh, we, are, we are taking pure substances that have been physically combined and we are physically uh, separating them. This will not work obviously on an element that's a only one type of, of atom um, and it's certainly not going to work on a compound because those different atoms are chemically fused together and so this is only going to work again on mixtures if you want to break down a compound you need a chemical change and if you want to break down an element you'll need probably a nuclear change to do that and so just like in a teenage drama um, if you want to separate a couple uh, you find something different about the couple between the two people in that relationship and you exploit that difference to drive a wedge between them. Anybody who's ever watched any teenage drama knows this is how it works. All right, and the same thing goes with mixtures. We're going to try to find some physical difference between the components of the mixture and we are going to physically exploit that to get those things apart. So uh, all the excitement uh, with a little less drama than uh, your teenage drama, One Tree Hill. Is that even still on? Um, so the separation technique, again, is not going to chemically change anything. All we're doing is physically separating them. Um, so a, a great way to start would be the idea of filtering something. Um, you're mainly exploiting particle size. Smaller particles pass through the filter, larger particles remain behind. Uh, so if you were getting chased by an elephant and you dove into a room, uh, uh, you would be the filtrate. You would pass through the filter that is the door and the elephant would not be able to fit through. Just like coffee, coffee is filtrate also. Delicious, delicious nectar of the gods filtrate, but filtrate nonetheless. And you can take that filtrate, add some cream um, and some sugar to that, and then create a, a nice homogeneous mixture from that. Uh, you could use a centrifuge. Um, centrifuge mainly exploits density. You spin it around rapidly, um, and then you'll create layers of density based on that. Blood separation is a great example of this. When you, when you donate blood, um, they, they, can under, they can put it under centrifugation and it's going to separate into the plasma, the platelets, and the red blood cells, each of which can serve different purposes. Um, so at the bottom you'll see that it's being removed uh, at, the at the bottom of that tube. Um, and so that's actually talking about the next technique. Once you've used centrifugation to separate it, um, you can go ahead and use decanting. And decanting is, is simply uh, separating things uh, you could argue it's solubility, but mainly it's density. Uh, the idea that uh, you're going to have these things separating based on density. Obviously, they're not going to separate um, if they're soluble with each other without using something like centrifugation. Um, but anyway, so once you've got separate layers, either through uh, centrifugation or through a lack of solubility, then we can start separating those layers off. So it's as simple as pouring it off the top or taking it off the bottom. In fact, if you if for... Uh, uh, for people who know about uh, wine, if you look at a decanter, the idea of a decanter comes from the old concept of wine used to have a lot of sediment in it, and so they could use the decanter to make sure that the sediment at the bottom didn't end up in the drinking part. Uh, so you can take sandy water, oil, and vinegar, any way that you've got the two layers and you separate them, whether they're solid or liquid or liquid-liquid, uh, you're really using a decant. Take it off the bottom, take it off the top, totally up to you. The idea of evaporation slash distillation is an incredibly important separation technique. Uh, there are literally entire industries built around distillation. Uh, and, and, and here we're just going to just exploit boiling point. Uh, you're going to slowly heat it up and when you hit one of those boiling points you usually hold it until that entire part of the mixture boils off. Now if you want to catch it, uh, that's called distillation, uh, otherwise you're just letting it go. So if you take seawater and just heat it up and drop the water off, you're evaporating off the seawater to get the salt. But if that distilled water is what you wanted, then you'd have to run it through, condense it, usually with uh, a liquid. It'll run through a tube, get condensed, and then you can collect it somewhere else. Uh, this, this is important to uh, alcohol, the idea of a distillery. That's what you're doing is you're evaporating off these vapors and collecting them. And also very important in the petroleum industry. When you get oil out of the ground, obviously that's a, a large mixture of a bunch of different things. And so that's what refining does, is refining separates off all those valuable components that are used for not only fuels, but a lot of other uh, precursors for materials such as clothing or even the uh, raw components of medicine, etc. 
But again, as, to, go, to go back to salt water, if you, if you really needed to drink something, uh, you could take seawater and then uh, evaporate off the water as long as you caught it uh, and then condensed it, that water would be safe to drink because you've separated it from the, from the salts. The last technique we'll hit on today is chromatography. And again, chromatography is, is a vast a range of techniques. Uh, dozens of different types of chromatography are available. Uh, the simplest one many of you have dealt with, paper chromatography, uh, where you have uh, the color run. So if you've ever accidentally spilled water on ink and the ink separates out into colors you didn't know were there, that's, that's very, very simple paper chromatography. But it gets very complex to gas chromatography, high pressure or high performance liquid chromatography. But the basic idea remains the same as that paper chromatography. You're going to have two phases. You're going to have a mobile phase, which moves over the stationary phase. And of course, the stationary phase that I just mentioned. Um, and the trick is picking out a good mobile and stationary phase for what you want to separate. Because the substances will separate based on their attraction to either the mobile phase or the stationary phase. And over time, then, you can start separating that out in your column. Uh, a tie-dye shirt would be a very, very, probably oversimple example of, of this chromatography technique. Um, but again, if you're attracted to the stationary phase, you will move slower through the column. So in the paper chromatography, the colors at the bottom, like the light blue, were more attracted to the stationary phase, and so they went slowly. You can see at the very bottom, there's sort of that teal green. Uh, that, that didn't go anywhere at all. You don't, that's not necessarily what you want to happen. You don't want things stuck in your column. You want them to pass through, but separate as they go through. Uh, if you're more attracted to the mobile phase, you go through faster, like the yellow and the orange at the top of that. So the same would go for if you were trying to separate uh, people, you could use chromatography. For example, if you were trying to separate uh, sports fans from non-sports fans, you would have a long hallway and decorate the walls full of sports paraphernalia. Uh, the people not interested in sports would, would move through the, the hall at a normal pace, and the people who were interested in sports um, would, would move more slowly as they looked at the stuff. And you could further then uh, separate the sports fans out by putting hockey stuff on certain walls or football stuff on other walls. And so again, by choosing the proper mobile and stationary phases, uh, you have a lot of control about how you separate stuff. And remember, the mobile phase does not need to be a liquid phase like it is in paper chromatography. Uh, gas chromatography uh, uses an inert gas over the um, stationary phase that is the tube. And so, but here's another pictorial example of it. We're going to drop a purple solution into the top, and you'll see it separate out into red and blue over time. As you may guess, that red is more attracted to the mobile phase, so you can go ahead and catch it at the bottom. So get your cups ready. And there it is, plop. And then here comes the blue phase, which is more attractive to the stationary phase, but still makes it through the column where it can be collected. Now, often you don't collect it. Many times, once you separate it, you'll then analyze it through like a mass spectroscopy machine, and that will give you GCMS, gas chromatography combined with mass uh, spectroscopy. Um, and so by putting these different machines together, it gives you an incredibly powerful tool uh, to separate and analyze all in one fail swoop. So I hope that helped as a simple and probably probably over simple introduction to some, some separation techniques. Uh, but all of these things uh, have much more detail and, and I'll try to throw a couple links at the bottom so you can see a few of those. So we appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks and have a great day.